by the guys from recording in progress. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm recording to my computer. Yeah. So anyway, so that that's basically it's the same as ECOS, but it comes with a a client. Well, I I, I wasn't sure if what it was exactly. I know it uses ECOS, uh, <clears throat> and it's a release that um, that is supported. In other words. As soon as you update the source code, you you can get a release from Stellarmate instead of having to do it manually, pulling all the source code and compiling and building and blah blah blah. You can just get a binary. But the, it also came with an advertised feature of uh, live stacking, and I was kind of interested in that because there are not really good live stacking programs, except maybe the you know a sharp cap is pretty decent. And AC Air, if you have a, the camera hooked up to that computer, but in my case. I would probably have the camera hooked up to the Pi, and I would like to display it. What about the... what about auto stacker? Well, let me continue first. Okay, okay. so um, so uh, uh, I started looking at um, oh yeah, so so I I tried that it has two clients. I say well, there's a, the PC client that looks just like Ecos, but what it is, it's uh, actually a front end, so it. it it uses the client functionality on the laptop and whatever server functionality is useful is on the Pi. And it works pretty well, I think. But um, yeah, that's sort of like uh, what you have there. That's StellarMate, that's right. So it looks all pretty flashy, but I installed it on my Android uh, Galaxy Tab A and it was slow like hell. It was, it, it took forever, it, you know, it's like painful. Um, so anyway, I, I gave them a bunch of feedback and the bottom line is, um, yeah, I actually got the live stacking to work, but just with a simulator. So this operating system comes with a simulator. It comes with a simulated telescope, simulated focus, or simulated whatever. So you can practice without going under the stars, which is actually kind of nice. Um, and I did get it to, to stack with the simulator eventually, but the, the visual feedback or the feedback from, from what you see is so poor. And if you click on a widget, it takes like forever to, to go anywhere. Using a tablet, can you use it on a desktop also? <clears throat> well, um, so the, the 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 back end is just the the server part is regular ECOS, what I have been using always already. So there's actually no difference, and that live stacking functionality is part of the client. So uh, yeah, it's the so that's the part with, that runs on the Android, and for some reason it's very slow, and um, everything is slow there. So that was basically a waste of time, but at least I, I figured out a few more things. And uh, yeah, I had this this Raspberry Pi here that I have in my hand. Well, I don't want to disconnect it, but anyway, it's just a Raspberry Pi with the uh, Pi 4B with the uh, eight gigabytes. I had Ecos running there, and I overrode it with a Stellarmate, and now I'm slowly recovering, the, uh, mm -hmm. putting in the features that I had there. And I mean, it works fine, and at least it's a release that I can easily update if I have to. So that that's the good part. But still, you have to do a, a, a few things manually. Like, for instance, when I use it here, I want to have it on my router. But when I'm closer to the observatory, then I have to have it on the uh, on the on the repeater. And for that, you have to connect that, hook it up, and uh, you've got to set priorities. Okay, when you're over, the, when you've uh, you have to set some priorities. Uh, which one is the strongest? Which one it will pick? And you can all uh, that's not simple to do. You have to write some scripts for that, and so on. It all works, so I've, I've got it back. But anyway, so that's another stacker that doesn't work very well, live stacker. And then there was uh, another one I tried, it's ALS, that's um, Astro Live Stacker. It's a Python program, I think, ALS.org, uh, ALS-org dot, uh, no, wait a second, ALS-app.org. And it looks kind of nice, if you want to look it up. But mm. it is, so, um you said that was that's called atlas live stacker a, a l s right astro Dash. live stacker i think yeah Dash and that's eight. another linux right uh, it's python so it runs on windows and linux oh. yeah anyway it's LS. Uh, oh that dash app.org okay. oh that, that, yeah this sorry dash app.org yeah Hmm. Just like here. So, so yeah, it, it looks kind of nice, but uh, when you use it, it's it's actually kind of slow. So, 
uh, and also the the controls. Each of these stackers, except for ha perhaps SharpCap, um, they have a GUI that makes it really difficult to get the color, pull the colors out. So um, this one is also one that that's just not good enough. So I, I'm motivated to do some work on DSS and maybe contribute the code back to the community. Uh, what I want to do there is I would like to incorporate the functionality of DSS Live in DSS itself and um, and add the graphics to it because DSS actually has better graphics than any of these other ones. It, it is a simple, yeah, that's Deep Sky Stacker, but there's also Deep Sky Stacker Live. Uh, no, coming up quickly here. This is French. So Deep Sky Stacker is made by in France. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Luc Coiffier made the first release that was in 2014, I believe. Uh, not connecting quickly that way. Huh. Hmm. Europe is cut off from us. The fiber has been cut. Yeah. <laughs> that's just your browser that's not working, huh? <laughs> A pretty fast uh, processor. I've got a, 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 a one gigabyte connection to Cox, so it just is not uh, a good connection at the moment, surprisingly. Well, um, I'm on Cox, and it's um, been, it, it's either like got, gotten really slow today for a while and come back up, and then actually stopped a couple of times for a short period of time, like a minute at the most. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> at least that's in my neighborhood. Well, Jerry, uh, Chuck, you didn't hear this, but Jerry is has lost internet at his house out there, Winchester Canyon area. I'll be darned. So, yeah. Cox so cable see, problem? Uh, Cox, yeah, as far as we know, yeah. So he called me up and he was going to cancel the tonight, but I said, no, I'll, I'll I'll start it up, start the yeah. meeting. Thank you. And here comes Tom, I, AKA Tim Crawford. I get so confused. <laughs> I, I like to call him T-O-I-M, T-O-I-M, T-O-I-M. Hi, Tom, hi, hi guys. Hey, hi. T-O-I-M Crawford. I may be not, I might not be long for tonight. I got uh, called the last night about 11 with my son. He had a leak in his, in his house and then i spent all up to about one o'clock today fixing a, a valve in his in his shower so i'm burnt you're plumb, <laughs> plumb well i was Got just explaining <laughs> I was, yeah, that'll that'll bum me that'll take you down hey Is jerry uh, so gone jerry, tonight? yeah jerry has a he lost connection to cox uh, cable this evening and chuck watson is saying he's had tr trouble with cox and yeah, i'm on cox yeah. i'm doing okay yeah hi chuck Hey, how's it going, Tim? Pretty good. I, I can't complain. Hi, Hank. Mike. Hello. So, well, I'll anyway, sit back and, 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 and listen in tonight. Yeah, Hank was explaining about uh, trying different stackers, and he's given up, and he's going to help Deep Sky Stacker to be better. <laughs> Sounds yeah, like. If, if I can. Well, he was, he was, he was, uh, he was showing the guy that created a software how to use his own software. <laughs> yeah. That was great. <laughs> yeah, that was. They had some trouble using their own uh, editor. Uh, anyway, so that that was kind of nice. Um, yeah. So, what language think? What, what what language is that in that you program in? C plus plus. C plus plus is. What I program in, I program in pretty much any language. <laughs> yeah, that that DSS is in written in C plus nice. plus. So the you're only thing I, the, of GitHub. Go ahead, Mike. I said you're a master of GitHub. Git GitHub, right, Hank? What about it? You're a master of GitHub. Uh, G I T H U B. That's where. Uh, Everybody puts their code up on the. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I, I installed that. Yeah. And that's is that owned by Microsoft? Is that right? GitHub is owned by Microsoft. That's correct. But everybody's it's interesting. using it. So it's uh, yeah. I don't worry about that. That's for the community, and and Microsoft supports the community without being screwy about it. So. But it seems uh, actually... like everybody's projects up on there. You know, 
the Pi Finder and Sky Solve, the, the two plate solving things. And most of the projects I've seen are on GitHub. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> pretty much, every, pretty much right. everything. Yeah. Well, it seems they like they a, set, a, they, go, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to say they, they set up a really good system and a great web page and every and it just attracted you know and and uh it's like a huge resource when did it start it wasn't that long ago was it uh <clears throat> what do you mean what started the github or uh github yeah oh good is pretty old uh but the the github where they have the repositories i'm not quite sure when that started yeah. Um, yeah. And Microsoft also, they, they added GitHub as a standard feature to their Microsoft Visual Studio. So you can just uh, use it easily. Maybe that's, you know, so they have a nice integrated tool set that way. They own it now. So, yeah. Oh, that's right. Remember, I, I did a Visual Basic class one day, one time to do a little bit of that a yeah. long time ago. Yeah. I use Eclipse. I mean, I, I prefer to use Eclipse. Uh, Eclipse is the, the IBM product that, uh, started like i don't know 15 years ago or so but also at wind river everybody was using that basically it's a pretty general gui and you can plug all kinds of tools into it among which git um, and python and all kinds of things the nice thing is if you're you know if you're generic gui then everything pretty much works the same so if you go into the debugger if it's in python or in c plus plus or c sharp it, it all looks the same that's kind of nice mm -hmm. yeah eclipse <clears throat> so what was I going to say? Oh, darn it. Forgot what I was going to say, but so I, I, I did get a new telescope today ah. and it looks, it looks something like this and it comes from, it's called dwarf uh, two from date. From, uh -huh. My friend has one of those dwarf lab and uh, yeah. And it's a, this is the dwarf two. And it is, it has pretty good resolution. I, I, I was going to get a C star, but I turns out, well, better to show you with the web pages. So this dwarf two, let's, let's share, uh, let's share the, the, the internet again here and go to dwarf. And so it looks something like this and is five hundred dollars for the deluxe uh, system, and which includes some uh, filters, uh, a dual pass filter, and a solar filter, and a neutral density filter. Well, is that the solar filter? I can't remember. So you just set it up, and it it's supposed to find everything for you, just like the C star and the uh, what, what other ones are that are out there. Uh, the Vespera passengers is two thousand. This this dwarf was deluxe was five hundred. The the C star is about five hundred. On that one, yeah, go down. I, well, I can't go downward in this one. Yeah, but this dwarf had seemed like the resolution was uh, about four times what the C star offered, even though it has a it's a smaller lens on this on these things. It's a dual thing. It's got a telephoto and then it's got a wide field. And uh, it looked, looked pretty good in some of the, what the pictures people are coming up with. The, the only course, caveat so with, the, with, with uh, this type of scope, and let me forewarn you, uh, Mark had a, uh, his, his dwarf and he's out in the desert and uh, he had a wind devil come by, knocked it over and broke it. So... The, the one thing I would do is make sure that uh, on a sturdy tripod huh? on a sturdy tripod. Yes. It comes with a tiny tripod. Yeah. And he uh, used that and it got knocked over. That's, over. that's, that's interesting. Well, <laughs> I think there's any dust devils out there. You, you should not be setting up. <laughs> be kind of... Well, no, he was already out there and it came by, you know, it's one of those things. So it's uh, an odd thing. Yeah. Oh, and then it's, it's, I was gonna say, so there's this, this Vespera. They're pushing this one. And only 222 of these being made, or something like that. They're trying to say. I'm not sure why they why they're limiting their the amount that they they have available. Only limited to 222 editions. And 
So this is, let's see what the specs are in this one. Uh, okay, here's here's the two inch aperture, 200 millimeter focal length, F4, 2.9 micrometer pixel size, field of view, 2.2 .2 by two field of view degrees, and 6.2 native, and then they have a way of boosting the resolution. Only 25 gigabytes of storage, which is kind of limited. Um, Unistellar, black, they all have Black Friday, so there's some money off on some of these things. Jerry's trying to, uh, he's thinking about getting rid of his older Unistellar Equinox 1, I believe. Uh, let's see how we can see through these things here. It's, where's the details on, on this one? They do work well. A little, little more substantial with a four inch opening. So here's yeah, here's one, the four thousand dollar one with the with the fake eyepiece that has has the uh, a little screen inside that you're looking at. And then this one, like Jerry has, is there's no eyepiece, but you just you know just beam it over to your to your tablet. So what's the upgrade um, between the 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 one and the two? Uh, better I sensor. Uh, yeah, the Equinox two, the, the the Equinox one is this. I know, I think it's it's, I think it's a like a s smaller field of view on the Equinox one. This one has a bigger field of view, which I don't know why that'd be any better. But let's see if I can find compare. Let's see if it'll compare. The, the, don't know if it compares the old one. It did say that somewhere. Share features. Here's a table. Okay. The Nikon eyepiece on the more expensive one, but I don't yeah, know why that. Mother glasses. The, glasses. the fake eyepiece. Yeah. Uh, light pollution, pollution reduction, citizen science. What's it? It's image resolution 7.7 .7 megapixel on the more expensive one, 6.2 megapixel. Battery lasts longer. Feel, same field of view here. Th oh, this is only uh, 34 by 47 arc minutes. So that's about the size of the moon, if you're lucky. Get it in well, there. Well, it's more suitable for, you know, objects like uh, galaxies and nebula. Yeah. 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 So 114 millimeter mirrors. That's, yeah, four and a half inch, 18 pounds or 20 pounds, nine kilograms. 64 gigabyte storage that that's what came with my with the uh, with this dwarf too it has a 64 gigabyte uh, card came with what's the f ratio uh, of this one what's say that again what's the f, f ratio f4 i think you just go f4 okay it's 200 i mean it's uh a four inch right which is about four, four and a half 114 and then I'm not sure what the focal length is. It's hard to find detail sometimes. Don't know if it says somewhere there. So yeah, the sea star. Go back to that. Because most under forty millimeter telescopes have a larger field of view. That's what I was thinking. So maybe it has a very small sensor. Oh boy, this is just hard to. Find the information on these things. The C Star S50, and you know all these telescopes are going to probably be improved every year, different versions and upgrades. So you can see well, some of the images. I think there's a lot of post post processing on some of these images. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like the uh, the uh, dumbbell and the. Uh, M fifty one. You don't. We don't know whether they've been cropped or not. So, right. They look pretty, pretty sharp. And which, if they have the C star, yeah. Even though the resolution of the C star is only uh, uh, in high def TV, which is you know nineteen twenty by ten eighty uh, resolution. So it makes mm -hmm. you wonder. Turner said, "Sorry about." how to find uh, more details on, on this thing about the sea star. Let's see.
That's a good question. Can you transport it by air with the battery in it? Probably have to keep it. You probably can't. Uh, you got to do a carry on probably with these things. It can oh, be carried so it... in your luggage, but some airlines may require the battery to be removed. Okay, so let's take the battery out and carry. Do that carry on. Yeah, lithium mine, lithium mine, uh, lithium batteries definitely are not allowed now. In in luggage, yeah. A carry on, you can do, you do it and carry on. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Do, 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 uh, that's probably because it's not likely to be uh, uh, brutalized by the uh, luggage handlers. Here's your <laughs> sensor. What was that the Sony IMX 462? Uh, a little bigger than a third of an inch. But uh, 1080 by 1920 which is like two megapixel kind of um, size. So I thought I'd try the, the dwarf because it had the higher resolution. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, they're still doing firmware upgrades and trying to make things work. I like the idea of possibly looking at the birds, uh, in the backyard and uh, you can actually track them flying which is pretty wild but uh, don't, it's funny that it can do that it looked like a veil yeah and just see the, where let's see this one yeah no, go. Get, go, to, go to the next one oh, oh okay they're flipping through them here yeah and then the, here, here's, here's the veil, the veil. yeah but again, I think there's some uh, post-processing on some of these. I've never seen the lagoon like that. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I mean, just you can throw that out just within, well, you know, 30 minutes of stacking. Um, also taking them into the desert or something like that where the skies are good. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. That helps. Last week we had um, uh, Brian Green with us, and Brian, he has a C star he just got, and uh, and he has also uh, this ZWO and what the five thirty three uh, color camera, and he and he set it up for the first time at the Brago Springs at that nightfall group, and and he beautiful uh, Andromeda in thirty minutes, just uh, just amazing sharp sharp and uh and number of stars is just uh, incredible with this is i think he has like a little bit less than four inch refractor uh, uh triplet and uh we had the auto focusing and had the auto guiding the uh, off axis auto, auto guiding remember we were looking at those streaks on his photos that he had we were trying to mm -hmm. figure out where the streaks came from yeah i talked to him today uh Oh yeah, what what did you find out? Your, that question was, did you, are you the one that knew about the pocket thing or what it was called? The, the, the pie finder, yeah. The pie finder, pie finder. Yeah. So I discussed what, with them. There, there's a couple other options. Um, there's also um, Sky Solve, uh, but that requires a phone to use, and so I, you know, I said I could have probably got that, but I, I wanted something that would stand on its own and use its own battery because I, you know, I'd hate to have my um, cell phone battery run down in the middle of nowhere um, doing, doing things, you know. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, so how does, how uh, does the Pi Finder work? What is, what does it do? The Pi Finder um, is uh, here. I can show you. Here, here it is. I got it here. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, and and they got a new, new improved version too. That's that's sleeker and uh, less money. Um, it 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 does. Uh, yeah, plate solving. Um, it's it's got a um, the high quality Raspberry Pi um, camera, which also Sky Solve uses takes a picture and does uh, uh it solves uh where you're looking at it uh the 
the GPS determines the time, location. There is a magnetic compass for initial alignment. And the, the they've been working on the, the software quite a bit on the Pi Finder, improving it. It's um, You don't need to adjust the... Uh, so there's a camera uh, the, on the side of the on the side of the box here somewhere. Oh yeah. Okay. On the other side. Um, here, Let's see if I can show you. See if they have a picture of this fully yeah, assembled can... 550, or you can buy a kit. There, there it is, right here. Okay. Okay. So, um, so this is the the, the Raspberry Pi camera in here, and a um a, a, a lens and so you look down here so here's your um the pcb let me just turn it on okay so you've got this here <laughs> um and, and it, it it's it's it takes about 20 seconds to boot up but um and i didn't see the camera on the web page there uh, that they didn't show the picture. Uh, I mean, uh, I, you have to go to another part, but uh, okay, Pi Finder. So um, they've, they've done a, quite a bit of improvements. Uh, the old one had uh, three adjustment screws. Okay, you don't need to do that now because what it does, it, it'll take a picture of the sky. And tell you where it's looking at, and you and with with the keyboard, you tell it which star to choose that your your telescope's looking at, and then it locks it kind of like syncs, um, like uh, a lot of other, you know, go to scopes where you're syncing. You know, you have to align it, and from then on. Um, you move it up and down and all that. There is a board in there with a, they call it an IMU, an inertial uh, movement uh, thing with accelerometers that can tell you whether you're doing this, this, or or this. And uh, um, and and the reason for it is um, it plate solves about once every second or so, and so it can keep track as you're moving between plate solves. So uh, this one here has its own battery. That's why I bought it. It's about 40 more dollars. It's got what is known as Pi, uh, let's see, uh, uh, I, I forget the name of it, but it's 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 got a, a big battery over here. You can see the thickness of it. And uh, so it, it lasts five hours on its own battery. and. I figured, you know, that's about as far as I'm going to last uh, at night at my age, right? So, <laughs> um, so it works pretty well. Um, this you is, put that on the side of your 14 inch, or uh, it's on on my 10 inch. I, I use it on my 10 inch. The 14 inch is being rebuilt completely. I I completely destroyed uh, <laughs> the uh, the old. Uh, uh, COVID junkoscope because it was taking up too much room and so I'm I'm building it. Um, you probably haven't seen the picture, but the top assembly is made out of uh, foam core, and so I'm in the process of uh, mounting the diagonal, and then I'll be building the rest of it. Uh, so uh, it's going slow, um, but anyways, um, anyways, this is. This is a, a, a great thing. You, um, also, the new improvement is if you have like an old Lowe's Manny mount without the uh, go-to, you use this instead. It, it, it'll, it'll work with a Nicotorial mount now. So, uh, you know. Uh, is it like an auto guider at all? No. It's strictly a finder, although... Basically, there 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 could be hooks in there because it's got the plate solving and uh, I think it did the calculations. It's it's uh, the accuracy is only like about six arc seconds because 
of the small lens, okay? And, and um, you're looking at a 10 degree field, okay? So uh, what he did was he chose the, the compromise of, of just using it as a, as a finder than a, um, an auto guider. And so, you know, I suppose if yep. you put a longer focal length lens on it, it'll, it, it would be a good, um, auto guider, but as it is, it's just a finder now. And so I, I, <clears throat> I suppose somebody will probably tweak the software, make it into a, uh, a good, uh, tracker. Yeah. A good tracker, you know? So by the way, I saw, I mean, since you mentioned that, let me just mention the, uh, <clears throat> Celestron Star Sense. I saw a review by Ed Ting on YouTube. So if you search like Ed Ting YouTube Celestron 10 inch or something, you'll probably find it. That was a really good review. So uh, he showed uh, how it works. I mean, you, you know Ed Ting, right? I mean, he gives really good yes. reviews. Yeah. So Woodland Hills. So that that Star Sense actually. Uh, so I saw the, the the holder. So it it has a mirror in it. So you position the star sense, you have to use a cell phone use. So you stick it in the holder and uh, it has controls for, for centering. Um, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Well, you have to align certain things and it has nice controls, mechanical and also electronic so that you can uh, align everything very nicely. And it is plate solving based as well. So it yes. just uses the cell phone. So before, I mean, before people start spending, you know, $550 on a pie finder, I mean, it's, it has, it's probably good. But the Celestron Dob is like a thousand dollars or something, the ten inch, I think, thousand something, and it comes with it. So it's actually, you know, a reasonable price for the functionality that it gives. And the other thing that um, somebody at the TSS pointed out to me is that you can also use Sky. A lot of people have Sky on their cell phone. I don't know if you know that, Mike, but you, you probably have Sky. No, I it's have. Uh... I have uh, uh, several other ones, but go ahead. Yeah, so sky is one of those things, and there are multiples, but you can hold it against the sky and you see it moving and so on. But it also has an align button. So you can you can actually put that uh, cell phone in a holder on any scope, can be equatorial or altas, and uh, you make sure that you optically, you know, just like classical alignment, you aim the telescope at something. And yeah, Sky Safari has it too. Yeah. And, um, you aim it, and then uh, once you've got it, then you uh, look that same object up in sky, and you say align, and then you can go to a different star and do align. So that's, uh, and then it does a you know least squares optimization of, of uh, for the go-to alignment. So th that should be actually you know there's no reason that it would. The only reason why it would be bad is be is if there are strong magnetic fields or something because it it uses the you know the magnetometer. And the uh, inclinometer, the, the mechanical, I, what are these things called? The mechanical one is fairly reliable, but the uh, magnetic one, if you don't have a good cell phone, it, it, it might uh, be sensitive to metal, metal tubes. And um, if I was not constrained from lifting more than 15 pounds, I would have tried it. But my dog is kind of uh, on the heavy side. Yeah, there's, there's another one um, similar. It's a free thing called... Uh, um, Astro Hopper, which uses your, uh, it's it's made to be lay on top of your tube, and so you go up and down and sideways, and it uses the accelerometer and the and the. Yeah, uh, I I have another app called Sky Eye, and it's can you can do that, but it seemed that it was there was too much interference from my Dob uh, metal that. Uh, it couldn't, you'd have to build a mount that would keep it at least six inches away from the metal or something. Right. So the star sense makes a lot of sense, actually, from that perspective. The only thing is that for star sense it requires more or less that, that uh, mirror that is kind of nice to have. So unless you build your own mirror. Yeah, you can. You can do the advantage of this here is that this has got a, a very fast lens. I, I'm <laughs> not sure of uh, your, your cell phone, whether you you know, can reach as far as, you know, on the, uh, you know, magnitude, you know, maybe. Hmm. Anyways, uh, with the pipe finder, you could connect it up with the Sky Safari. 
And so if you're looking for a comet, uh, there's now hooks that you, you click on Sky Safari to find the comet, it communicates to the pipe finder, and then the pipe finder tells you how far to go. So, uh, yeah. Does it have its own Wi Fi, Mike? Yeah, it has its own Wi Fi. Okay. Does it also have an align button? Yep. It okay. does align. So, um, if there's nothing mechanical now that you need to align it with, that, that was one of my, my biggest gripes because. This is a little bit flimsy. Uh, um, so probably what I'll do is I'll wind up gluing this down afterwards. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, it worked pretty good. You know, um, there's a learning curve with all these things going through them. This has a lot of, this has a lot of menus. It's got a lot of catalogs and, and capability filtering it's got a you can tell it um you can keep track of all the objects messier and gc or whatever on this and uh, so you can it can tell you in a way oh you already seen it go look at something else or and there's another mode where you find one object and it'll tell you, okay, we, we can find up to 20 objects around where you're looking and here's where they are. You go select it and it'll tell you where to go, you know, because for some people where you've got a narrow field of view because you're between a house or trees or something like that, it helps. And so, uh, Mike, so the cost was 550 bucks or included well, the camera? No, mine was a lot cheaper because of the fact that uh, I got it as a kit and I got it at an introductory price. So mine was like about three fifty. dollars um, Still not exactly that that cheap. Uh, the, the price, the, the 550 is if they assemble it and hand it to you as voila, use it. But a lot of people, a lot of people, uh, buy the parts separately. They have their Raspberry Pi. Um, there's 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 two uh, PCBs here that you can buy naked for about $14 or something like that. There's uh, various kits that go between you buy the switches or the LEDs or the major parts and you put it together. So he's got all these other options for those who are more technically um inclined and and also he these the parts are mecha uh, the mechanical parts are 3d printed so he supplies the uh the the valves for free but then you can buy those if 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 you want to although if you go on discord um there are people that have just built their own mechanical parts out of metal or whatever so um i think like you need a dew heater to keep some dew off at night time um maybe although you got to remember well what one could do is one could put a cover over this you got the raspberry pi that's um probably dissipating about two to five watts or something like that and so the it'll 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 it it would keep this nice and toasty warm hmm. and you put a do a dew shield you know or you heat up the lens separately you know but this does get a little warm so if one were to put a, a cover over the whole thing then it, your chances are you're not going to do up so yeah that those those little scopes the sea star and the and the uh, dwarf they seem like they have some kind of dew heating uh, ability so maybe it's because of the processing they do that yeah. they're getting heat and uh, they trans transmit that to the lens somehow get there's a heat I... sink on the side of this uh daisy i mean this dwarf oh so it's i wonder if that's for the thermoelectric uh i wonder if the sensor is thermoelectrically cooled to make it yeah, less don't, noisy. Don't know why they what the what the do um, what the heat sink is doing. 
if you want to keep the heat there for it says not the good to put these out in the sun but that even though they designed it to uh look at the sun it says don't put it in the sun it's like hold it uh, my friend mark's done it he's gotten a uh, sunspot uh uh pictures yeah yeah, yeah. I think um, with the uh, the Unistellar, is that capable of uh, good uh, lunar pictures? Oh, that was a yeah. Well, it's just barely yeah, big enough for them. It should be if they get a filter for it. I don't remember them mentioning the yeah, or 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 even the other two scopes. There. Those... Oh yeah, there's a smart solar solar filter that Unistellar has. Yeah, that fits oh. on on the front. Yeah, yeah, Full and I, I think on, on some of these small ones, you're supposed to make a uh, a Batnoff mask so you can get better focusing. Is a huh. another thing to do on some of these guys to mm -hmm. so you get your focus right. Two hundred fifty bucks for a smart solar filter, not cheap, and even that that other one that that. Uh, this one, the passengers, it was, this is an expensive scope, too. A <clears throat> couple thousand bucks for this. There so was the, another the, one that looked similar to that. Um, huh. They have two different versions. They have a one that's called passengers and one that's not. Um, well, the, 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 the Dwarf and the uh, Sea Star, they use regular two-inch uh, um well, actually, that you get away with a one and a quarter. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think filter. this is a really, really small. And what they need to add on this is, since it has a wide field of view, they need to get a Barlow lens as a, as and they're talking about working on that. So you, they do give you when the deluxe kit, you get a a, a filter thing to that you oh, hold yeah, or oh here. yeah, that, that looks like one and a quarter filters that just slide in there. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's very possible. One and a quarter. Here, here's twenty bucks for a filter. Yeah, it sounds so. Like you're it. keep keeping the prices down. Extra battery, fifty bucks. But uh, oh, these are Black Black Friday prices. There's discounts go right now. Are those rechargeable batteries in there? Or do you have to put batteries in it? Yeah, mm -hmm. rechargeable, rechargeable lithium. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's probably not recommended to connect up a cord because it could get tangled so this is the kit that i got you know mm -hmm. comes with the the three filters what filters are they uh, uh one's a dual band and another one is a solar and another one uh let me see what they actually say about it or just probably a no neutral density yeah, what what does that mean? Neutral density. That's it the, just means that it darkens things. All the light frequencies the same. Okay. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Exactly. Like looking through a a dark negative. So that's for the moon, probably. What that's for? Yes. yes. Or well, if you're solar. Thinking, if, yeah. Yeah. No. Just the probably moon, but the the the. Uh, a, where is that filter? Right there. ND one th one million to something. ND one million. Those are all mm -hmm. neutral den neutral density, except for the uh, green one. I think that's the uh, lunar. The, the green one that you might be the Just might be the dual city. band. Yeah, but see what you could do. What you could do now is because of that. Um, that holder, if it's one and a quarter, you can <clears throat> screw in. Now you can get something like H alpha or uh, oxygen or some other uh, light pollution filter and enhance things. Yeah, it's inch and a quarter. It said right on there, inch and a quarter. Yeah. yeah. So ND and versus UHC. What, what's Ultra UHC? High contrast. Okay, thank you. The sun will appear in a natural orange color, natural orange color using the ND. So the ND is for the sun. Mm -hmm. 
And what? so what's the third filter for? Let's see. I thought it was a separate solar. Darn it. I'm looking for, I thought there was different, uh, I thought there, there was is. three filters. I thought they show oh, three. Oh, it's just two. But why do they show three yeah, in the yeah. kit? You look at the kit, it's showing three. Oh, you know what? If they're both the same, two neutral density. So when you put this, you're using the, looking at the right. sun or. Yeah, you don't want something. to burn the sensor. There's two, there's two telescopes here. One's narrow field and one's wide field. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. So right, some of the people do comments and they apply, they put their photos here. So here's, if he says from a very polluted city, this guy was doing imaging. And there is a, is that 51 with the two galaxies? Yes. Yep. And then here's probably M13 or something. And then a, a nebula of some sort. The swan. You, you, oh, good eye. Good eye. Is that the swan? Yes. That makes sense. And then this, this guy says, this item is crap. <laughs> you can buy the <laughs> same quality. <laughs> Get the same quality from eBay for far less. <laughs> and some people yeah. have had trouble uh, figuring out how to, how to use it. So yeah, yeah. A little bit. A learning curve that people don't like. Yeah. And the app is a smartphone. I bought it. I, I bought a drill and Mike. I'm. I. They. They. Uh. Uh. From uh, Amazon, and one guy bought one, and he's he gave it like one star. And he says, "God, man, I got." They sent me this drill, and it had the in the bag. It would there was there was mildew in the corners of the bag and the drill had been painted and <laughs> it turned out the guy got a brand new drill and he had an old one, I guess, and he painted it and he cleaned out the bag and everything and sent it back and said it's no good. And then they sold it to this other guy. Oh, this, no. there's, there's a lot of crap that could go on. And then that's how you get on some of these weird reviews. Mm. But Hopefully Amazon catches people that do that somehow. They, uh, they might. They might easily do that. I I, I got some news uh, from the VCAS, some sad news, um, not to change yeah. the subject. Uh, but uh, Hal Jandorf uh, passed away right. this uh, month. Uh, and I, went to I, his... thought it was, I thought it was a couple months ago. But was maybe it? it seemed like um, it was... But uh, they had a uh, oh yeah you're right uh, they had a uh, a special event um, this uh, last weekend. Who the, who is uh, that, Mike? I don't know that name. Hal was uh, he's a professor of astronomy at uh, Boyd Park College, and every so often was uh, stuck with being president of the club. Oh okay. I, I, I stuck him with that when I uh, I had to drop being president in 2005. That's Ventura? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He gave uh, public presentations. He, he was very good at that. And uh, um, so also uh, the VCAS is... Uh, 35 a year. They're expensive. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. We we're only twenty bucks a year. So I think it went up to twenty five, didn't it? No, I think we still got it at twenty. I think for anything, yeah. Wow. Well, well. Observer's corner. This person recommends a classic eight inch diet Dobson. Yeah, that's oh, that was Hal, that was Hal, that was Hal Jandor said that. Yeah, I'll mention to you. Uh, uh, just from last week, I, I started talking about this, um, the bearing surfaces, Mike, that we were oh, talking yeah. about. And I got in touch with Formica, 
And yesterday I got samples from Formica. The lady really understood what I was talking about. And so she sent a bunch of samples and obviously some are just way too slick, but others had some surface, uh, not roughness, but uh, in, in one they, direction. They're how rigid. do they classify that? Is, is they call it stiction or do they call it, call it something yeah. else? Yeah, if you have a rough enough uh, surface, it'll give you a good stiction. It's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like friction that sticks. <laughs> right. But but do they, do they have a name for that for you know, to classify their stiction. surfaces? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah, it's it's they just call it stiction. And you know the whole I think the whole idea, of my uh, Tom was to get a surface that rides on for on Teflon. And when you when you move your scope, it moves fairly easy, but when you stop moving it, it will it won't just keep gliding then stop. It'll kind of stop on its on its own fairly quick, fairly quickly. And if you get it just right, there's a real good balance when you get movement that's just excellent. Right. And it, it, it and uh, I've I've seen like with Tess's scope, you know that's that's the old Orion uh, daub. That thing it rides really rugged. You know the the uh, the, the azimuth uh, movement is really really hard, and mine's mm -hmm. just about right because I have Ebony Star under it, and and on the the altitude bearings I have that new stuff they call uh, Lunar Mist, I think it is. Yes. Lunar, and and it's just it's just a tad too slick. It just doesn't work right. Hmm. So I had this lady send me some samples and there's ridges on some of them. They're like wood. It's like a wood grain and there's ridges running, running down one direction. So if you, if you turn the laminate in the proper direction, though, there, these ridges would pr probably act pretty, pretty well. Except when you're in a, you need a circular ring, then certain orientations would uh, not have it. In, in other words, you, the best surfaces where it's universal, no matter what direction you're moving it. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, uh, but on altitude, it probably would work really well. Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking is for altitude. Yeah. But there there was one that they had, and, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But I'm going to try and play around with some, uh, taking some images. I have a couple of different cameras here, and I have to use an old computer to get them on it and so I can screen share it. But if I get the right angle with the right reflection, maybe we can take a look at those yeah. these jobs. That's all. That's all I have to say. Um, so, I need I need to get some Teflon to to go forward with my scope. I I just haven't gotten around to getting it yet. You know, Mike, when you get it, um, I I can, I don't know. I'm I'm just gonna just come out and say it. I I recommend getting the the kind that has it's a acid etched. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've seen so many scopes with these, with the Teflon surfaces where they put screws through them. And as that Teflon wears, eventually that screw is going to get into the, into the yeah. laminate surface opposing it. Well, also another thing too, is that the pieces tend to rock, you know, they, they, they get skewed uh, on, oh. on the scope I got from Tom. That, oh. that, that's an issue where you have to keep constantly when you put it together you got to tweak it so that you can fit the uh, scope in there oh uh, wow okay yeah. you know, stellophane there see that stuff Eb the ebony star that was classic and it had that surface you can see the surface i you, you know what i I've, I've got some of that frp yeah and the frp that's the stuff you can get from home depot yes. and then joe told me the other night he texted me and said that uh capital hardware on milpa street has it as well and they put those on larger dogs on the big dog, anything about 18 yeah. inches maybe 16 inches on mm -hmm. up they'll put them on those i haven't tried it uh look at that look at that he was an old can. film can that must yeah. be hard to find a film can somewhere. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, you know, a good a good amount of materials that uh, John used is no longer available. Like his big scopes, he used old disk drive platters, and not the type you put in your PC. We're talking about 
12 or 18 inch disc drives, I mean, platters that they used to use on the old, uh, uh, you know, computers, the, the mainframes, you know. You know, Tessa was telling me that they, uh, she was using records. Oh, yeah. Oh, Tom used that. Really? Yeah. Well, how do, how do they get that's on the on the asthma move, movement, right? Yeah, yeah, right. You just uh, you, you 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 put a hole through the hole and you put the Teflon on top. Huh. Your links. Not no, you use, a, you use a record you don't particularly care for anymore. <laughs> yeah. I used to have a bunch of them. Or in a case in a, in a case of uh, me. Uh, my my will to fire album that my kid brother scratched up while I was in the Air Force. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's you know more more to come on that information. I just I just I'm always searching for something like that because uh, Randy over at Astro Astro Systems he he just thinks that this uh, lunar mist is the way to go. But I, just I got don't. some. Yeah, it's it it's okay. It's okay. But I think if you had a if you had wider, if I had wider, uh, yeah. if I had wider bearings, and maybe yeah. put the Teflon out at a, yeah. you know, made it made a larger uh, bearing itself, and yeah. then made, put the Teflon way out at the end, yeah. it might ride a little bit better. Yeah, mine moves I, way too easy. Yeah, I got the diagonal holder for the three point two inch uh, mirror, and I I noticed that it had it suffers the same issue with a lot of other diagonal holders whereas you adjust the screws yeah the whole the whole mirror can rock back and forth because it's it turns because it it, it instead of just pushes it it does this type of thing and it it walks it 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 really? walks the the mirror around right yeah huh. so what i what i'm doing is i'm i'm canning the a entire adjustment and because i'm using wire spiders that's going to to adjust my final uh adjustment for my mirror how thick of a wire uh 20 thousands i got i got a bunch uh on on is it just 20 i think it's 20 thousands yeah man that is thin um you know, I went to um, Banish's his a scope. You know, the guy, the editor for Sky and Telescope. Yeah. And I asked him, "Can you just let me?" I, I wanted to know how tight he had the uh, the wires, and it wasn't that tight. He says, "Just don't don't go too far." You know. And so I touched it. You know, and it's just these wires are just holding up these big diagonals. Yeah. You couldn't play a tune. You can't get a. You couldn't play a tune on it then. No, 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 no. I think uh, it'd be subsonic. Uh, All right. Yeah. That's interesting. All yeah. Right. I was going to go use guitar strings, you know, yeah. go to my guitar buddies and, and ask for used strings. But uh, um, as, a matter of, as a matter of fact, I got some cheapy uh, guitar tuners um, from um, eBay. And um i might be using those for adjustment yeah uh, that's a, yeah that's an interesting concept i mean you could get some uh probably the e-strings and you know steel string guitars that e-string yeah. would probably be just about right yeah twenty thousands. yeah say so, hank uh oh you're, you're you're not working on your scope right now but um before you you went in uh, did you make any progress on the uh the camera issue uh, uh, with the uh, the tube, you know, the rigidity. No, I haven't uh, looked into that anymore. Um, I think I may just live with it for what it is now. And but I'm actually what I want to do is uh, so I've got this new uh, pie that I was just talking about with the stellarmate. I want to put that on my uh, triplet on the one twenty seven ED. I want to set that up and <clears throat> play with that for for a bit. See, uh, um, I haven't mm -hmm. used a scope in a long time and. Uh, it might just be nice. I mean, a twelve inch is kind of big to manipulate, and it is a cheap build, and it's uh, it's it's probably the spider, but you know, it takes some while a while to figure out. Um, How big is yeah. the triplet, Hank? Sorry. How big is the triplet? 
127 millimeter. Uh, oh, nice. F7 or so. It's the one that I uh, got for free at the RCMC. I won the uh, mm. the prize. It was uh, $2,500 nice. value at the time. So <laughs> that's actually nice. Uh, Very um, nice. But I have used it very little. Later on, I bought actually a Mac Newt, uh, and that's actually one of my favorite scopes. Yeah, so, I've seen some images you took with that. That that yeah. awesome. it's easy to use. It's uh, it's fairly light and it's razor sharp actually. So it's got six inch of aperture. So which brand? Uh, it's the Comet Hunter um, by uh, Levy's Levy Levy scope. David Levy and uh, and uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Scott. Uh, uh, Schroeder or something like that? Uh, Levy, the, the uh, guy at the head of uh, uh, Explore Scientific. What's his name again? Oh. But he, he goes to all the astro parties. And uh, at least he used to go to the RTMC all the time. The last two times he was not there, unfortunately, because the whole attendance went down the tubes. But uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but that's nice. So it's a, it's a nice scope, and I want to take a look at it uh, again. 127 is that five inch or, or six yeah that's yeah, five, five. Inch. Mm -hmm. that's 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 sweet and that's that's a good size yeah it, it is it is yeah but the the f ratio of the magnet is is better actually for astrophotography it's an f f4 f4 an f4 yeah. i think and the uh yeah the triplet is like an f7 or something like that the images yeah. you took at that mac Newt were just incredible, Hank. If you don't mind me saying, they they were really, really it, nice. Yeah, it's 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 actually quite good. Uh, there's a guy on the the Sky Searches who uh, who makes really really good pictures, takes really good pictures, and he he used the, that Mac Newt forever. I think he now switched to a Takahashi or something like that. So, <laughs> the old, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The guy yeah. used a, a Mac Newt with a with a Los Mandy, and it took great pictures. <laughs> now the, yeah. he, he he did that from his uh, he bought. He lives in San Diego, and uh, they went to uh, one of these astro sites. So, if you drive a few hours from San Diego eastward, or maybe one hour or so, then you you get into the mountains, and they have a, a site there that rents, uh, you know, uh, observatories out to individuals. And mm, oh, from, oh, so wow. that's kind of nice. So yeah, he's got a great site to uh, to go to. Anyway, um, yeah. So How Mikey, you, was. You, you Sorry. are recovering from a health thing. Are you okay now, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's never been a big problem. But the doctor told me to to sit quiet for a couple of weeks. Okay. So I saw him yesterday, and he gave me another couple of weeks that I can't do anything basically. So, but I'm I'm fine. I mean, uh, I just have to be careful. That's all. Is that one of those red red cats? It's the red cat fifty one. Those, those are. Oh, actually, that's my Red Cat Fifty One. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, was, I was going to say I have the same thing. It's an AVX. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that that rig is kind of ugly. So, actually, that, that's the rig that I used on my Newt, and I replaced that with a, uh, a Pegasus unit. So, I mean, that 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 little black box underneath the wooden uh, thing, that is a, a seven port USB two mm -hmm. hub. And I also got a five to you know twelve to five DC DC converter on there somewhere. The Pegasus is the yeah that's that little block at the front. Uh, the Pegasus is the uh, it, that has those two things combined and it looks much nicer. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. it just cost three hundred bucks, but oh well. <laughs> Dick, Dick took an image with the with that red cat, and he he blew it up. I mean, it was incredible. He blew the picture up. He kept on magnifying it, magnifying it, magnifying it. It was still, it was still pinpoints. Who no did? matter how it did, the, the the that little red cat is incredible. You're talking about Dick, right? Or who, yeah, who that was Dick. Yeah. Dick that did that. I, I'm so yeah. impressed with what he did with that red cat. Uh, yeah, the, the image of Ophi Ro Ophiuki, uh, that's just, just amazing. Yeah, um, you saw it too. That, 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 that was that one night he just kept blowing it up and blowing it up and yeah. still pinpoint. He must be living at a pretty good dark site because I, I couldn't do that from here, I think. Uh, yeah. So much light pollution here. Uh, it was it was pretty impressive. It was pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, what is this? Oh, that's the Pegasus unit? Yeah. I forgot exactly how much it was, but I think it was like $300 or so. It, but it's kind of nice. It. Uh, yeah. USB 3. Right. 
yeah so i i needed that to offload the power because i i the, the thing the problem with what i had is i just barely could manage the power because um, i had to use all kinds of tricks to make it because the the ac2600 draws like three watt or so you can just barely run it off the raspberry pi so the raspberry pi was powering part of it and you know you add one little thing like one guide scope extra and you'll see it fail the, the raspberry pi fail and so on after i got the pegasus i got a whole lot more power and uh, also for the cooler because the cooler takes like 15 watt or something like that that's quite a bit wow. so uh yeah yeah, USB puts out five volts, right? So, yeah, and two point five that would be twelve point five watts, right? Eight amps. Well, that's a max. That's max. For, yeah, for total, you know, eight times uh, five volts that'd be forty watts total out of the Pegasus. Jerry, go. I, I think it. it's eight amp amps total out of all the ports. I think, right. Well, whatever it is, it, it has plenty of power for my uh, my setup, and I'm, yeah. I'm using quite a bit actually. So it's uh, yeah. It offloads the Raspberry Pi, so I don't have any crashes there anymore. Because I used to get uh, error messages on startup that it didn't quite have the power, and those error messages are gone. So. <laughs> Are you are speaking about Raspberry Pis? They're they're now down to jelly bean prices again, you know, thirty five, forty five dollars, and uh, for the really? for the cheap ones, and they've got the Raspberry Pi five now, which is even quicker. <laughs> yeah, right. Two to three times. Yeah, so we're we're talking definitely PC speed. <laughs> Buy one. Now this is this is just like a it's just like a little computer on onboard computer, correct? Yeah. Right, mini computer. Yeah. Yeah. Now I think uh, the, the the downside is that these do, um, they use more power than the uh, older Raspberry Pis, so. You know, in the battery situation where you're trying to save power. Okay, so it's seventy nine dollars. Oh. Well, that's the eight 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 gigs. Did you get yeah. the text from Chuck? He said his his Wi Fi went down. Yeah, uh, yeah. Jerry Jerry's wife. Oh, Jerry's yeah, having problems. Was, yeah, Chuck. He he's probably gone. He just uh, he just said my Wi Fi's got went down. Oh, oh, Chuck Watson. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might oh. text him huh. back here and I'll tell him my. Weird. Oh, sold out. Okay, they they sold them out, but uh, yeah. You know. hmm. hmm. But that's definitely a powerful little beast. I mean, you could do a lot with that. Mm -hmm. So my pipe finder, you, I, I, I. Um, that uses a Raspberry Pi four. Um, it could you it it could you use two gigs or four gigs. So, anyways, yeah, Pi Finder. Okay, so you found where they're three ninety. Oh, that's a kit though. Yeah, they're not Wasn't showing that the hard to put... not showing the camera here. Um, except here. Yeah, there you go. So that's there a complete. But what's it. The, the kit? Oh, okay. They're showing it. Is that the camera? Yeah. That's the camera. And then um, the bigger box is actually the lens. It uses a good quality lens. Oh, the iris actually is a multi leaf, it's not one of those cheapy ones. Hmm. So I was thinking, you know, in, in the beginning, oh, the, the screen's going to be too small. But the uh, user interface is uh, actually is pretty nice. Um, it's very readable because you're not going to be that far away from it. You're going to be right there. You know, the, the finder's right near where your eyepiece is. And so, um, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, 
I think that's the way to go. I mean, well, Mike, I mean, if I had, if I have, I have a Takahashi mount. It's an EM11. It's a non-go-to uh, mount, but it, it, it's Takahashi. It'll, it'll track really well. And then I would, I uh, would get something like this and put it on there, and you could be finding all the NGCs and all the other. Uh, it's just like having a Jeep. It's just like having a go-to, right? Yeah, but it tells you it's a push to, and in the case of the oh. Takahashi, one of the one of the one of the physical ways of doing it is built for a refractor. Yeah, that's what I got right there. You have this motorized? Is it? Uh, oh yeah, it's but it it's uh, I never got the go to version. You were you were supposed to be able to add um. What do you call the, the digital setting circles and the what kind of motors are those? The servo motors, and 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 upgrade them. But I called that guy Art down in Texas, and he says they don't have those anymore. You have to pick them up used. So I've been always thinking, man, it would be kind of cool to listen to these guys at the workshop, and maybe you know there might be a way of really making it slick. Well, the pipe finder would be a lot cheaper than probably getting that stuff. Um... Another oh, thing too sure. is, uh, you know, if it's using encoders on the mount, then you have to worry about having it properly aligned with the North Pole. Yeah, 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 yeah. Plus, the problem with the 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 problem with the the mount is that the uh, that what do you call it, the error in it? It's it, yeah. It, it, it's it's only it's only good. I think to 2025. I'm not sure. It might be 2030. But after that, the little scope, the little scope mount in there, uh, the finder scope, it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Yeah. So I have to go to a different way of, of aligning, but it, it's kind of neat. A pole master or something like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a nice, it's a nice mount. You know, I have only used that guy since I've had it for years. I've had that thing for probably 15, 20 years. I've only used it about five times. I just don't take it out. I'm just a push to guy. I go out there and I just set up and go. Yeah. But, uh, you know, listen to you guys, it just makes me feel like, hey, there's a couple of things you guys talk well, about. Well, I live in a place where I just can't see the um, anything fainter than about third magnitude. And so oh, a yeah. good portion of the uh, places you use a uh, a tell ride you can't it doesn't work tom is this you sharing yeah who what is, is is this, this the, is, a, is it a this, this is a astro bin oh, oh astro yeah. bin. okay yeah. image of the days uh, people choose image of the day i guess yeah. oh look at what that the, penis occultation wow wow that is sharp. That's neat. And that looks. Oh, that's Uranus. Oh, okay. Hey, no, it's my my anus, my anus. Or is that your anus? Uranus. <laughs> not not my anus. <laughs> it's my. <laughs> okay, gotcha. You know, in Swahili, that would go over their heads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is what's this one here? Be, the beta. Grus? What? The beta Grus, the bottom one there. Oh, I need to go see it. I don't know. What is it? Is this a planetary? It, it, it looks like it. But but uh, it, I don't know. No, it may not be. It's got to be. Just for diffraction spikes here. Just Obviously, you know. it's a long exposure and nobody, nobody took a picture of that uh, star Oh, time. It, here you go. Integration, five hours and 30 minutes. Right here. But, that, but it, it's a light shell. It's not gas. It's it's a light shell. I don't understand that at all. Yeah, it's the uh, gases. Uh, yeah. Just picking Perfect. up the gases. Yeah. So it's using, uh, what, telescope or lens? What's, what's an ASA 500N? What's that? The oh. telescope? Yep. 1900 millimeter focal length. Newtonian. 500 millimeters. So that's uh, 
That's about like my 101. My 101 is 540. That's about uh, 16 inches or something like that. Longer aperture. Inches. Oh, 500 millimeter aperture. That how big is that? It's oh, aperture. No, no, can't be. Yeah, so that's a 10 inch. Is that 10 uh, inch? Yeah, okay, that's a, no, 25, no, 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 20 no. inch. It's more. That's tw 20, inch. 20 inch. Yeah, yeah, holy smokes, yeah. and yeah, and oh, very oh. short. Uh, <sighs> that's not right. That's like F2, but that's oh, like uh, it is. Well, F4, 500 into 1900. Yeah. That's F3 point something. Yeah. And then imaging camera, what's an FLI? Uh, Finger Lakes. Lakes. Finger Lakes. Yeah, and that's a CCD. That's a, that's a full frame or even bigger. Might be bigger than a 35 millimeter. So where is he looking here? Where is this thing? Sculptor. Sculptor. That's in the Southern Hemisphere. Oh, yeah. Southern. Yeah. Groose. Yeah. You can see right there. Minus. Oh, Groose. Yeah. Okay. So, it, and then mount, an ASA mount. Okay. Well, obviously, this guy's decided to spend his kids' inheritance wisely. <laughs> they're not getting anything. They, they what is the ASA? They're not the worthy. ASA? <laughs> what, is, what is ASA? Oh, uh, that's the company. That's a high uh, astrograph. It's it's a high end uh, European. I think it's German or something like that. Wow, wow. Yeah, he's got a lot of money <laughs> sunk into this. Oh yeah, like just look at all those accessories. Mm. Probably the the, the uh, field flattener is probably about two thousand dollars or something like that. Mm. Trying to find God out there. Yeah. Beta Groose, representative of the characteristics of age of stars. No, AGB stars. AGB, big stars. Huh? False color. What did he do here? He added ultraviolet. What? Yeah. That's probably why he had to take it for so long because, you know, it was. He's, he's picking up ultraviolet somehow? Yeah. So, he, uh, so the camera is sensitive to that. I guess so. Yeah, they don't just come out and say it's the planetary. They they say it's a it's there's dust and gas and envelopes around the stars, but that that sounds like the planetary. But no, you're, I, I see what you're reading down here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it could be like our sun um, when you think about it. You know, the Oort cloud or whatever. You know, yeah, it gets pushed away, but it's. It's still burning. It's it's not collapsing and dying and throwing off stuff. Yeah. This guy really described the whole deal going on here, huh? Yeah. Good for him. That's yeah. <laughs> so Tim, I did find a link for uh, to, to somebody who converted their EM ten mount to with on step, if you're interested. Oh, okay. On -step? So, so it becomes a go to mount. With on step, yes. Okay. If you ever wanted to convert it to a go to mount, um, is your main uh, Hank? Is your main scope still on step? Yes. With your. Yes. It works very well. So if if you go to the uh, Google I/O groups uh, for on step, uh, actually not the Google groups, so the I/O groups on step. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah. The M10. Yeah. Maybe, is that what I have? The DM10? I thought it was I, an 11. Maybe I it's an EM10. I, uh, I don't. Is, is there a link? Because I, I found a, a, a message where there was a link also. Okay. I don't see a link in there. If you, this is messages, right? So, so go to the, is this the on step group? Yeah. Go to the wiki. 
Okay. No, actually, um, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Go to the wiki. And then to the right, you see that blue column with blue lines. Uh, uh -huh. there's, yeah. Uh, showcase. Click on showcase. Okay. And then search in this page for Takahashi. Okay. Down, I'll do search. Just, yeah, just search for Takahashi. Right here. Yeah, and then click on the uh, converted, uh, the first line, converted. No, no, first line, first line. Oh, first line, no, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, go back. Go, go back. You, you just here. got it. <laughs> oh, let's see. Yeah, so this, click this, on that's the first oh, line. There. So yeah, there. Yeah. Click on that one. This one has a link. That click on that link. And it's got a it's a YouTube video that shows how it can move. It's not a very long video, but at least you can get an idea. So that's the conversion. It just shows how the mount can slew. Oh neat, you know. He got into the he got into that he got into that box that's on the side of the mount. Yeah, it looks like he changed it out. I think that's so. A, that's a bad that that box, the control box in there with the boards, on the Takahashi, um, that guy Art down there because I it's spongy when you put in your court when you put your little cords in there to for the for the uh, the hand paddle, it yeah. you can you can barely get them in without it feeling like you're gonna go and knock the thing off with it. It's just like it it pushes you. You can just push it around. It's terrible. And huh. that guy Art told me that it's one of the worst things that Takashi did was that little box, the controller box. And the yeah. board, you see, plug into it and the board, he says, I don't know why it doesn't just snap. But it looks like this solves it. You just you, you change it out to that. Yeah. Wire, uh, wireless wireless control. Yeah. I have a, a controller in my hand that's non-step controller that would probably fit in that hole. Well, you, oh, wow. This this thing here that is that's basically that, might, that would do it that would do it that's just about exactly that size yeah it's it's got Wi-Fi and Ethernet and all kinds of stuff but this is a this was made by somebody on the OnStep group who uh, enjoys just building these things I, I, he made them for like thirty or forty bucks and it was so oh, cheap wow. I decided to get one I thought you know you never know I was thinking about converting a DOB to because they can do both Altas and and Equatorial um, so anyway. That might fit in that hole that you have there. Boy, that's, that's, that's it. for me. I'm I'm not really good with that stuff. Okay, okay. I'd have okay. to help. You have to have to have you help me with that one. But that's something that I'm not good at. I, I, you know, I get shocks off flashlights. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that 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 looks slick. That looks really slick. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna head off, guys. Yeah, I think I'm, we've had a wide yeah. ranging discussion this evening. Okay. It was See it, you guys really, next week. As usual, it, it gets for me. It's it, I don't know. It's more and more interesting. I like to sit back and just listen to you guys because man, I just learn. It, yeah. You guys, you guys know so much about all this, uh, you know, tracking and imaging, and I, I just don't. I don't have any idea, but I I love listening. So, anyway, have a good Thanksgiving. Oh, Chuck said to everyone, "Happy Thanksgiving." He couldn't get back on. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, him and All Jerry, right. they, they just apparently yeah. Cox really suffers. That's weird because so. they're so so far they're so distant from each other. I wouldn't think they'd have the same problem going on. Yeah, but they do. So. Might be a major Cox server or something like that. You know, um, yeah. distribution point. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say. It, it, sometimes there's little holes in their in their system. Yeah. Tim, oh, are you I on forgot to ask. Yeah, I am. I, I forgot to ask how, um, how was the rain situation? I mean, hardly uh, any. <laughs> we very, had a little, very little. We had a little. Yeah, we were, I was hearing, oh, it's going to be seven inches in uh, Santa Barbara. I'm thinking, oh, another Montecito. You yeah, know. I put it. We, we have a outside in the door that goes out into our back patio when it rains with the new roof. The dew gets on the roof and it'll drip onto the patio. So my wife had me put in some rain gutters. And, you know, we, with that mist that we got down here, it really worked well. There's, I mean, it just stayed it stayed dry. I have a shed with all these tools for, you know, making guitars. And it would always get wet inside, you know. And 
put in a little rain gutter, that little rain gutter just eliminated that. Good. So I'm really stoked about that. But uh, no, it was a Smart. much rain. What, what did we get? A half inch at the most, Tom? Or? Oh, not a yeah, tenth of an inch. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a up in the mountains. I got it maybe an inch at once Rafufio yeah. area, but otherwise it was pretty weak. Yeah. yeah. Once once or twice it rained really hard here for like about a half hour, and uh, thank God the the observatory kept dry. Yeah. But uh, last this this last Saturday or was it Sunday, we came uh, up from uh, 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 Simi Valley and we had this god awful uh storm that we went through uh uh close to uh Sananella huh. where everybody was virtually stopped on the freeway. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. Not good. No, where's not good. where's Sananella? That's above Paso somewhere? Is it uh it's on Highway Five. It's oh. it's above. Yeah and it's it's there's a junction you can come in from uh over yes. five. Yeah, it's a junk. It junctions from what is it, forty six or something like that. And you can yeah. you come up the freeway a bit. Yeah, San Anel is a good stop between where you're coming from, San Luis Obispo and Sacramento. It's a nice yeah. little stop. Well, we we usually stop uh, at near Harris Ranch to stop off for Harris Ranch. Yeah, and yeah. then there's another one that's interesting. Um, that's another 20, 30 miles. Kettleman City, and yeah. they have an interesting place there, um, one of a kind thing where they have just about everything that they have pretty good food and uh, lots of munchies and antiques and stuff like that. Santa San Anilla has a Bravo split Farms. Anderson. It has a split what? P. Anderson. In yes, Santa it does. Anilla. Yeah. <laughs> it also it has a very interesting um, hotel that was built by this uh, Hispanic family. It looks like a mission, and they, I mean, actually, it is a very beautiful place to stay, except for it's in the middle of nowhere, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's got a nice restaurant, um, it's very well kept up, um, as any hotel in, in Santa Barbara, it's very, very nice, and you can see it from the Highway 5. So, oh, you're talking about, you're talking about Santa Anella? Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, just yeah. Anyways, we'll see you guys. Uh, have okay. a nice uh, hey, turkey day. Care, okay. Good, Good night, everyone. Good. Thanks for the tip, Hank. Appreciate Ending it. Ending now. No Good night. Good night.